some of the biggest benefits are seen just in terms of time savings and quality control when producing your layouts. Even though you are producing two-dimensional or you know, flat pieces of paper drawings, the model gives you the third dimension so that you can constantly check for correct elevations, making your drawings more accurate. The tra trace tools in Constructor make qualifying consultant drawings more automated when comparing one building system to the next. And if you have already taken the steps of using Constructor to model and coordinate your building efforts, lift drawings are a breeze since you, you know, can just use the coordination model as a starting point. The information is there. It just takes a little bit more to get it onto the printed page, and I'll show you how. Some other benefits that you can use uh, in coordination with all this is that you can take the documents and the coordination model and use the site surveying tools available to you in Constructor to ensure that what your crews are building is exactly what you plan for. And I'd actually like to show you that a little bit more. Let's talk about that. With all this talk about the power of virtual construction and your building projects on the computer, I want to make it clear that Constructor also has a direct, direct link to the actual site. So with the help of a symbol total station, for example, uh, and your concrete drawings in hand, the site survey tools available from within Constructor allow you to pick any point in the model and find its exact coordinates out on the project site. Or you can go the other way, too. So if you choose, you can shoot existing conditions with your Trimble collector and then put those back into the model. Speaking of the model, OK, let's go from the model to the documents. Obviously, there is a need to communicate the final plan of how a coordinated building goes together. After a project has been coordinated via the model, Instructor's automated construction documentation tools allows for a smooth transition to 2D field and shop drawings. Now, for those of you familiar with Constructor already, you may uh, know that its primary modeling engine is driven by ARCHICAD. But we also support TechLip for structural steel. And we'll soon announce another exciting support option to you as well. So everything you need to make your shop drawings of the highest quality, all of those tools are included with Constructor. Okay, Constructor has a specific set of tools that allow you to develop and coordinate your various building systems, you know, MEP, structural, architectural, and so on. And then once you have this model, you can take views or snapshot of how the building goes together. These views are then annotated with dimensions, notes, and references. And these references and notes and dimensions are all automatically updated once they are placed onto a drawing sheet. So the idea is if the building changes, so do the drawings. Uh, you know, before I get started with a live demonstration, I'd like to go through a few key concepts of how the system works and quickly explain, with the help of some screenshots and such, the major steps of getting from the model to sheet. A little agenda I've put together. Now, if the drawings we produce are a reflection of the information in the model, we need to make sure that we have an accurate model. When I say accurate, I mean coordinated with all the building parts joining together in the way that we see fit. The model is built directly from the information delivered to us from our design consultants, you know, preferably in DWG format. Of course, we need to do our due diligence and make sure the information we're going to be modeling from matches the contract docs. We want to make sure we're modeling the right building. We will then want to insert this DWG type information into Constructor so we can then model on top of it. So these, these DWG files represent a sheet of paper in the contract doc. We just slip sheet that DWG information into Constructor, a constructor so we can you know, trace on top of it and turn that 2D information into a three-dimensional model. Probably the most useful step in all of this is to add the annotation, keynotes, callouts, dimensions. Now we add this information to the model to help further explain the construction of the building to the field crews. And once you've added that information, 
ready for the last step, which is you know producing the sheet so you can then print. Okay, let me go into this a little bit deeper. So if you're using DWG files as your reference data, make sure this information matches the information found in the contract docs. I'm repeating it because it's really important. It's a good idea to compare the file name of the DWG to the file name usually listed or found in the title block. Okay. Of course, you can also open the file, check it out, and visually compare it to the CDs too. Now, once you have that information, you'd like to model. It's just a matter of defining a space in Constructor to place it. So you open up Constructor, and you partition out a place in the modeling environment so that you can flip sheet that DWG information into it. Okay, we suggest using separate stories for each drawing you'd like to have reference to in the model. And there's a good reason for it. I'll show you why in just a minute. And once you've defined that location, you're ready to place that information. And it's just a matter of going up to the file menu, going up to the attach xref function, and browsing to that file. And once that information is in, you, know, you might bring in 30 sheets or so, and you're ready to start modeling the first sheet. Well, you browse to that first sheet, and you right-click on that item and say, show this story as reference. And that makes it available for tracing. So you have control over what you're looking at as far as your reference material is concerned. Once you have that reference material up on the screen, it's just a matter of using the modeling tools or virtual building blocks to create a 3D representation of the building to be. The reference information will tell you how thick the wall should be and what you, what you can do. You will find out how tall your column is, how wide your column is, and so on and so forth. So you just have to adjust your modeling tools to match that information. That goes for all of the different modeling tools in Constructor. And I recommend you know keep yourself organized. Make sure to take advantage of using layers in your modeling. So if you're modeling a structural slab, make sure you stick it on the structural slab layer. Or if you're modeling an exterior wall, put it on the exterior wall layer. You'll thank yourself later, or thank yourself later, believe me. I promise you, I've done, done a lot of these. Now, as I said earlier, I believe one of the most useful steps is to properly annotate your model with information like dimensions, keynotes, descriptions, elevation markers, and so on. All of this is important to do because it helps you communicate the design as clearly as possible to the field crews. Constructor has a full set of documentation uh, tools that we'll take a look at closer during a live demonstration. So we have our model. We have it called out with information and call outs and dimensions and such. Once we have it all there, it's just a matter of showing that information in printed form to the people we want to talk to. Now, all we need to do is simply zoom into a part of the building that we want to uh, communicate. We see that we have our added annotation. And it's simply a matter of taking a snapshot of this part of the building. So if we're looking at the southwest corner of a floor plan, zoom up on it and save a snapshot. Okay, well, we call this snapshot and constructor a view. And this view is almost like a, you know, a, a photo or a dynamic image of your model that you can then take and place on your drawings. So if the model changes, that view of the model changes as well. Pretty nice. 